Welcome to Finances Do Matter. My name's Richard and today we're going to talk about interest rates, why they're going up, why the central banks are determined to combat inflation and what does that mean for your money. The problems we in the Western world have suffered in recent months or perhaps really the last 12 months is runaway inflation. And in order to combat inflation, central banks and governments have adopted the practice of raising interest rates. Because by doing so, it makes things more expensive to borrow, thus reducing demand because inflation often is caused with too much money chasing too few goods. That's a general assessment. It is a little more detailed than that. But broadly, by reducing the demand, prices eventually will fall. And this has happened to some degree over the last 12 months. But inflation is sticking much tighter, much more strongly than central banks thought that it would. So much so that in Europe, the inflation rate is only just marginally below 10%. In the UK, it's marginally below 9%, and in the United States, it's marginally above 6%. However, the raising of rates has been quite substantial. For example, if we go back just over a year ago, the Fed funds rate, which is the rate they assess in the United States, went from 0% to 0.25%, to the current 4.5 to 4.75 percent and there is an expected at least quarter if not half percent rate rise due this month later in March. The European Central Bank rate is two and a half percent and experts and economists are predicting possibly a half percent rise very soon raising it to three or it may adopt a more cautious approach and raise it by a quarter percent followed by another quarter percent. And in the UK, our current interest rate is 4%. And experts are predicting that it will rise to 45 by the summer. Now, both Bloomberg and the BBC have published articles on this. Let's just take a quick look. Okay, so headline today on March the 2nd, in Bloomberg, Lagarde says ECB rate hikes may need to continue beyond March. European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde said interest rate increases may need to continue beyond a planned half-point move in two weeks' time. March's hike is both necessary and very likely, Lagarde told Spanish television show Espejo Publico on Thursday. Policymakers will do everything to return inflation to the 2% target from more than four times that now, she said, declining to speculate on how high borrowing costs will eventually be lifted. The ECB chief, and that's the European Central Bank chief, is set to preside over a second straight rate increase of 50 basis points as officials maintain their inflation-fighting efforts following stronger than anticipated European data this week. Investors now see, and please take note of this, investors now see the deposit rate being lifted to a peak of 4%, up from its current level of 2.5%. BBC News published yesterday the headline, Bank of England boss says UK interest rates may rise further. Interest rates may need to go up again to slow the cost of living down, Bank of England boss Andrew Bailey has said. Mr. Bailey said raising rates higher may be appropriate to control inflation, but said nothing was decided yet. The next rate decision is on the 23rd of March, and Mr. Bailey said the bank would assess the latest data before deciding. In February, the bank raised rates to 4%, the highest level for 14 years. Analysts believe the rate will peak at 4.5% in the summer. So with interest rates virtually at a decade high and have further to go, if these articles are correct, 
and there's nothing to suggest that they won't be. What effect will that have on A, your standard of living, B, various forms of investments, and C, how can you avoid the ramifications of these rate rises? Well, first and foremost, of course, if interest rates are going up and you are borrowing money either for a mortgage or a personal loan or you have credit card debt, then clearly your finances are going to be adversely affected because those rates will go up, your monthly payments expected will rise, and that will leave you with less money in your pockets. However, if you're a saver and you have a substantial amount of money in the bank, then the interest rate that bank or building society or depository is paying you will go up. Though, quite frankly, the difference in deposit rates and lending rates are quite substantial. In terms of investments, while interest rates are rising, this generally has an adverse effect on the equity markets. Now, when the equity markets perceive that the rate rises have stopped and the next movement is likely to be down, then we may very well see equities begin to rise again and potentially substantially. However, until that time occurs, they are full of doom and gloom. And this is why we're seeing equity markets fall, because the cost of businesses to borrow are increasing. Mm. The potential demand for their goods will be reducing because people like you and I will have less money in our pockets if we're already borrowing money. And so businesses' profitability are likely to be affected. The irony is, and you'll hate to hear this, but banks and financial institutions tend to do very well when interest rates are going up. But they're one of very few businesses that do. Other asset classes like property are likely to be adversely affected. Of course, it depends where you live and what the demand for property is in that area. But of course, with mortgage rates going up, fewer and fewer people can afford to take out new mortgages or take out additional borrowing and so as a result the demand for housing tends to fall in that environment then only to pick up again as interest rates decline and we're beginning to see that happen here in the united kingdom and certainly in a number of states in america so the third point is what can we do about it well the first thing is to pay off the debt if we can that is charging us the most interest and generally it will be in this order. Payday loans, hopefully you haven't got any of those because they are extortionate in terms of interest rate charges, followed by credit cards, followed by loans, followed then by mortgages. Um, within that sort of gap between credit cards and loans tend to be overdraft interest as well. So do what you can to get rid of that higher paying interest debt and if that means getting extra work, doing a side hustle, in fact, I've produced a video on how to increase your income. And I've also produced a video on how to cut bad debt by looking at how you are actually spending your money. So I'm not going to go and reiterate that now, but I've put links to those videos in the description box below. Of course, while rates are rising and inflation is high, people who are in work are asking for higher wages. And whilst that may satisfy and solve their problems short term, that in itself is inflationary and will ultimately cause the national rate of inflation to rise further. So we're in for difficult times. And whilst I am in no way giving any form of investment advice, in terms of the overall picture, while we're expecting rates to continue to rise, unfortunately, most investments, unless they're interest-bearing investments, are likely either not to rise to the extent that they have or quite likely to fall. Bear that in mind before you commit your hard-earned money to any form of investment at this time. My focus would be on paying off high-interest debt as quickly as I can, especially if that is going to continue to rise and you are not tied in to a fixed rate already. 
That's it. Thank you for listening. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell sign so you're notified of our videos as and when they're published. Keep safe, remain prosperous, and I'll see you in our next video.